There are more than one billion people looking for education globally. Uh, less than 100 million of them are kids that don't have access to school at all. <clears throat> 300 million are kids that don't have access to good school. And with good school, I mean qualified teachers, curriculum, feedback and content. And the rest of them are people looking for skills and competencies they need in their work or get the job or just for hobby. And the group is big. And why they need the skills and competencies? It's because the world changes so rapidly that our skill sets and required competencies are changing all the time. And in that sense, learning is not a human right, only a human right. It's a basic need, comparable to food and water. Education is maybe the most important investment for any nation. But we understand that there is upper limit how much we can invest, so the money should be spent wisely. If we think education only one thing, we go wrong. There is a several areas. For example, basic education, kindergarten education, elementary education is very different compared to vocational education, corporate training, higher education, or open, non-formal education. And that's why we shouldn't think education as a one thing. They are different. But the basic question in all areas is, who is going to teach? We don't have even enough teachers nowadays because of those billion people looking for education. But how is it in the future? It don't get any easier. I'm focusing now more on this vocational, corporate, open and higher education. And so, first you say that we have internet. Internet is full of educational resources. We have e-learning, we have massive open online courses. So you can easily say that, okay, the education for adults are there. But it's not. Why there are still those almost one billion people looking for skills and competencies for fun or for work. In fact, if education is only about delivery, it has been solved some 600 years ago. We have had books, and the books haven't solved our educational challenges. Of course, the basic need is to learn to read, write, do the basic maths. But education is not about delivery. It's something different. It's more like understanding the learner's goals. Both learning is understanding my personal goals, as well as teaching is understanding the learner's goals. Before you can teach, you have to have, have understanding on the topic you are going to teach. But before you can build a learning material or plan a curriculum, you have to also understand the relations between the topics and the surrounding neighborhood of the topic. And if we don't have enough teachers to teach, how we can imagine we have enough people to build all those materials, all those curriculums for all that need? I think we need artificial teachers, artificial coaches, artificial mentors. And that's the theme. In, we, we have done a lot of research, development and design work in our team. But before going to that work, let's take what is learning. We learn by observing our environment, conceptualizing our observations and adding them into our existing mental structure. We can call that conceptual structure. And for example, when kid notices that there is a creature in the water, in fact swimming there, and it do have a tail, we have some sort of conceptual understanding of fish. Fish is connected to water, swim, and it do have a tail. But we learn exactly the same way by reading sentences. 
Fish swim in the water. Connects fish, swim, and water because one sentence describes one or more meanings. And all the words in that sentence are connected through the meaning. That's why we can say that when we read enough sentences, we understand that fish have a tail, and so on. Of course, a couple of sentences are not enough, but when you imagine we read a lot of sentences, thousands, maybe millions, we have a conceptual or semantic map about a topic we have just read. And this works with humans, but this also works with computers. And this is a basic idea behind our approach, how artificial intelligence can learn topics challenging for humans as well. But it's doable. Let's add some lines. We have a basic understanding on fish. Now we read a sentence, water in the river was clear, so the water, river and clear is connected. And the next sentence connects the water to harbor, and the water there is polluted. After reading these lines, we have a semantic map about water and fish and some surrounding neighborhood. If we ask a question, no matter if, if we ask it from a human or artificial intelligence machine, why there are dead fish in the harbor, we can start looking our conceptual map. We don't have a direct answer because there were no such sentence. But at this point, we can make reasoning that because fish is connected to harbor through water and pollution, maybe the answer is because of water is polluted. Okay, this don't always get right, but this is the way we also make reasoning. And this is the way how our software robots, in other words, bots, learn to build coarse materials. And let's start from this bigger problem, building materials, how it is done. This is a metro map. Metro map brings very complex transportation structure in one piece of paper. We do the same for any information. For example, if the bot reads first grade mathematics books from the sentences, it can figure out that the count numbers and equals are strongly related. Of course, there are a lot of, lot of more content, but those are the key concepts. When reading first and second grade mathematics book, there will be different levels, like first, basic numeracy, understanding the numbers, the ordering the numbers, the blue line, the red line, basic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and finally the red line, which is about in which order we do the operations. But mathematics is easy, but the method is applicable to more complex topics. This is about uh, kindergarten teachers' basic skills according to Finnish curriculum and the reports about what is a good kindergarten teacher. The uh, slide shouldn't be readable. It's only here in order to show the complexity of the skill sets, the complexity of models we can produce. And if we zoom in, it's still complex, but you can see that there is a lot of connection between the core concepts. And this is the understanding that the artificial intelligence can build, and it follows that through the lecture it's going to give. So the basic understanding is there, even though it's complex. And when adding more complexity, we already said that the books are there. They have been there for decades, for, for almost 600 years. Uh, we made an experiment we were, where we modeled some 20 million books from Finnish libraries. We built uh, connections between every book, every topic they, they are in. And, well, the map is so huge, I won't show it. It's 20 million books, 40 billion relations. But, for example, this is a part of it. It's a Finnish science fiction in 21st century. It's still very complex, but we can, we can still see it's somehow readable. And when taking only the center nodes and some, some book from the cloud, we can say that we have the most important things from Finnish science fiction from the 21st century. 
And that's an open educational course. But how about teaching? Teaching is understanding the goals. And how people discuss in web. I, I think messaging platforms, WhatsApp and such, are familiar for everyone. So our bots will discuss via messaging platform. You start your bot, it starts to discuss with you. It figures out where you are, what are your goals, or what is the course goals. And it brings a personal discussion and builds a personal view on your knowledge. In the very beginning, on the left side of the screen, every map is empty. This is clinical calculations for first-year first students. So the, so the map is first empty, the bot discusses with the learner and finds out what is his or her current skills, the, uh, the mid middle one. And after some hours, maybe 10 hours training, the bot gives you exercises, asks why you think this is related to something, discuss with you. Uh, your skills evolve, the right side is the evolved skills. And uh, well, in discussion, the bot ne next takes the non-checked area in, in the surroundings where you already have some skills. So the bot takes care that we start from the very beginning, we have a progress where you don't go to difficult themes, you stay in zone of proximal development, so, so training things that are optimal for you. Skills and challenge are in balance. And so you learn. And it's, a, it's not only for science or literacy. It's also for sports as well, because learning is always the same. Here is a football coach bot that is based on National Federation's material. When you start the app, you, you get a coach that starts to ask, can you pass? OK, I can do that. Can you kick hard? Uh, not yet. So let's get an exercise on that. And once again, those topic, topic maps, conceptual maps are the key. Left side on the beginning, and on the right side, when you have done the certain exercise or, or reach a certain level. And the discussion is key on everything. First of all, the artificial intelligence can build a course material, because w when we read enough sentences, we understand what this is about. The, topic, uh, the content is there. We have that much open educational resources. We can give or take there are tens of millions of video clips, for example, tens of millions different single materials. But when we can combine them, them and, and bring a direction to learning, so understanding the goals, we can bring teaching for apps. Same goes for libraries. If we are interested on adventure books, we can easily create what is a modern adventure books today, the open, open education. The role of the teacher is going to change. But don't get me wrong, we still need teachers. We need even more teachers in the future than we have today. We need teachers that are interested on, the, on supporting the learner to reach the goals, not that much on teachers who just only delivers. And we need teachers for elementary education, for kindergarten, even more than today, in, in, in areas like elementary education, the teacher's role is crucial. We can't replace the teacher, no way. But when going to corporate training, higher education, or open, non-formal learning, we can take bots to help. And finally, I would claim artificial intelligence is our only chance to bring education really for everyone. Thank you.